Hey guys, it's G. Let's talk about how to fix your cell activator. Now, if you haven't watched my video about my new recipe for a cell activator, I'll link you to that at the end of the video. There's a lot of explanation on all the densities and the bloom technique. But for now, let's mix up a quick batch and show you what kind of problems that you might face while uh, using this cell activator. So I'm adding glue to water, uh, making sure I mix this very thoroughly. Um, once the water and glue are incorporated, I add a little bit of my varnish, incorporate that as well. And then I'll add about this much of paint. I'll put the exact recipe on screen as well. And we'll mix that up. Always mix your cell activator really well, because there's no such thing as an overmixed cell activator. So in this first test, what you're going to see is the cell activator is going to spread. You're going to see very, very small cells. And obviously this is not the effect that you want, but you'll know that the cell activator is in fact working as a cell activator. If you see even a couple of cells, you know that it's going to work, but it's just a few tweaks away. Now, as you can see, I've completely blown out the cell activator, even introduced some heat. You're seeing some cells, but there's a lot of blocks of solid white, totally not the reaction that you want. So if you're getting this from your cell activator, essentially the problem is your cell activator is a little bit too thick. So we're gonna add water. So in the second experiment, I'm gonna add a little bit of water, some more of the colors, and we'll give this new batch of cell activator another try. Now, as we blow this out, you'll notice we are getting cells uh, around the outside, but the center, the cell activator is still struggling to sink. So if you're seeing this, if the petals are um, getting cells, but the center is still a big blob of white, uh, you have probably put on a little bit too much cell activator and the central part is it's harder for you to spread that out without pushing it downwards and into the paint. So from here, I'm not really going to tweak the cell activator anymore. I'm just going to make sure that when I apply it in the center, I don't pour directly into a puddle. Instead, I'll spread it around in a circular motion. So here we go in this test, put down some colors. By the way, I haven't changed uh, the color puddle at all. Just put a very small blob of cell activator. And let's blow it out and see what happens this time. Mm, there you go, you're seeing it's starting to react. I do want to point out that if you are watching people on the internet using Australian Floatrol, um, Australian Floatrol, the cells happen a lot quicker than in my glue and varnish recipe that we use here. So you do have to give it a moment um, to sink before you start seeing the cells pop up. Now, here we go. This is the reaction we're hoping for. So now I'm going to do the actual pour that I want to do. So I'll start with the yellow. Recenter my tile. And now I'll add the magenta after I pop these bubbles with the with the little torch. I'll add my magenta. I'll follow it up with the turquoise, and then we'll go in with the cell activator. Not too much. And now we'll blow this out, and hopefully get cells that show all three colors or show a gradient. Yep. That's looking good right there. Let's actually take a close up and look at this. This is what you're hoping for, essentially. So, now that that looks good, I'm just going to blow out a little bit of the solid white parts with a straw, and we're ready to spin this. spin and there you go 
I'm pretty happy with this. We'll get a quick close up. Now, be sure to watch this video coming up next. Um, I break down the entire process for how I do the bloom technique, uh, how I mix my selectivator colors and pillow paint. Thanks for watching, guys. This is G. See you in the next video.